Good morning, EMF Jacksonville. Chaplain Claypool, your command chaplain, here to give you this morning's divine worship experience. And so it's not about me, but it's about our God and how he works through me, through Senior Chief Munoz, and through others that give you a great experience. So this morning, I just want to share with you from God's Word. We're going to be looking at Romans chapter 12 today, uh, and that's one of my favorite passages. It gives us so much great insight and uh, how we should live as believers and how we should lead as leaders in a community or in uh, a nation that is broken. And so many of you, I just want to just share with you this, that we are praying for you. Many of you are still mobilized or you're deployed. Some of you are on the east or the west coast. You're in that kind of that stage of quarantining and roaming and you're about to be home. Or some of you have come home. And your family members are so excited that you're home. Some of you are overseas because you're deployed and you're in a foreign place and you're in a forward position. And I want you to know that we're praying for you by name. Some of you are still battling uh, the COVID response. And because we're living in a digital world right now, because of everything going on in our nation, we are having to take extra uh, care of each other. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to just share many things with you, whether you're watching it on YouTube or Facebook, whether you're going to Instagram and uh, following me there. I just want you to know that we are praying for you. Senior Chief Munoz and I spend many time every day in prayer just for you, for your family members. And speaking of family members, I've, I've learned that a lot of family members are starting to watch this video. So you've, given, you've been shared the link for this and so just want you to know that we lift the family members up as well so this morning what I want to do it's a little bit different and uh, a lot of things have been chaotic this week so just had to kind of go with the flow on that and so this morning I'm in my home and just wanted to share with you this divine worship service just me this morning but I do want you to spend some time maybe not right now but maybe in the future, later on, after you've watched this, spend some time in worship, in song, and in, in music. One of the things that I love the most is just music. I love all kinds of uh, musical experiences, and I know that kind of sounds different uh, coming from a chaplain, but I, I do love it. I love. I grew up in the you know in the 80s and the 90s as a teenager, and you know just listening to a lot of uh, good good hard music that I, I enjoy. I uh, love some of that 70s stuff, but I also like classical music, and I, you know, just, you know, I, I just love all of it, especially some of the good Christian music that we have today. So I would encourage you to spend some time, pick out two or three of your uh, favorite uh, musical Christian music artists, and just listen to them and worship. Just spend the time listening to the uh, to the lyrics that they give us. Uh, one of my favorite individuals that is a contemporary Christian artist is Jeremy Camp and I love listening to him he's a little bit edgy uh, but he he brings a strong message in what he sings and how he sings it and it always points right back to the Savior and so that's what we want to talk about today how we transform ourselves into what the Savior wants us to transform into and so this morning, let me start out with a word of prayer, and then I want us to open up God's Word. I want us to see what it says, especially in Romans chapter 12, and how we transform ourselves and be the men or the women that he, wants us, that he wants us to be. So let me start out with a word of prayer for you and for your family. So let's pray. Holy God, thank you for today, because this is a special day, not because it's a holiday, not because it's some day that is uh, nationally recognized. It's your day. It's the day that you have declared that we will come to you and worship you in power and in honor. Not because of ourselves, but because we humble ourselves and we step into your presence to worship you. And did we we just give you the praise and the glory. Father, I pray for the ones that are still mobilized, the ones that are deployed. I pray that you keep them safe. You bring them home safely and strong. I pray for their families. Even though they're still at home, they're deployed because they're separated from their family members. I ask you to bless them and keep them strong too. Give them a strong faith and a strong support system that only you can provide through your, your means. God, I pray for the ones that aren't military, but they're watching this. And I pray that your word will speak to them just as powerfully as it does to our military, to my sailors, and to my Marines. And I just pray these things as we speak your word this morning in Jesus' name. 
Amen. So this morning, I just want to talk a little bit. The, the message, uh, as you've probably seen in the link, is entitled Transformation into What God Wants. Transformation into What God Wants. See, the Bible says that we are to be transformed. And we're going to see that scripture in chapter 12 of Romans in just a moment. But have you ever thought about what it takes to transform into something? To move from one state of being into another. And so, uh, you know, we have little kids in our house. We have big kids that have moved out of our house and they're in college. Or we've got, I've got a high school senior right now. But growing up, you know, watching cartoons... We always watch that cartoon Transformers. And of course, that's become a, a multi-million dollar movie icon now. The movie Transformers. So they, they transform from one state into their real state. They're robots. And I don't know if you've watched the, the Transformers movies. They're cool. They're, they're edgy. I love watching them. I can sit down and watch every one of them back to back to back. But what the biggest thing about that is is that they come and they 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 come into into existence in one state they look like normal things out there in the community they look like trucks they look like cars they look like sports cars they look like 18 wheelers but then in the moment we need them to be who they really are they transform all their parts all their looks start moving around and then they transform into the real superhero robots we need them to be. And they become victorious over the enemy that they face. Guys, I want you to know that that's what God wants us to be. We came into this existing world as a sinful person. We came into this existence with a sin nature. And if you don't understand what I mean by sin, let me just break that down for you real quick. Our wrongdoings, our mistakes, our failures, the things that hold us back. The Bible says in Romans that we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Back in Genesis, the original two people, Adam and Eve, they were in the garden. And as they existed in the garden, they were perfect. They were unblemished. But yet they ate from the tree of the forbidden fruit and they sinned. And they failed. And from that point on, they always were going to sin. And they gave us that, what we call the sin nature, the failure nature. We're never, never going to be without it. But in this great aspect that God loves us so much, he gave us a way to beat the sin nature. And that's what I want to share this morning for you. Like I said at the beginning, Romans chapter 12 is probably one of my favorite chapters to read because it gives me a direction. It starts out with what I need to become. Then it gives me what I need to function as, my qualities. And then it tells me, hey, this is how you're going to live your life. So it's, a, it's kind of a three-step three uh, chapter. And that's what I want to look at this morning as we look at Romans chapter 12. So if you've got God's word, I, I encourage you to, to bust it open. This is my Bible, and uh, many of you have a, a Bible app. Just bust it open onto Romans chapter 12. And if you don't have a Bible, if you don't have God's word, I would encourage you to let me know. Because if you don't have one, I'll get you one. I'll send you one. I'll, I'll make sure you get it, uh, You know, however we need to do it. But I want you to open up to Romans chapter 12, and I want us to look at this. And so it begins, it begins as we talk about in Romans chapter 12 to verse 1. I'm not going to read all the verses, but I want to uh, you know, kind of summarize uh, the second half of it as we see. And here's where that transformation becomes. It says, brothers, I therefore urge you by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. So that first verse says this. It says, your job, your service to God is to present yourself clean, holy, and unblemished as you possibly can. 
But I've already shared just a minute ago that we can't do it by ourselves. We have a sin nature that points us to screwing up. It points us to making mistakes. It points us to failing all the time. But the Bible here says in verse 1, hey, your service, your job is to present yourself a living sacrifice, something holy, acceptable, something that God would want to see in his presence. Verse 2, this is the great verse that I love right here. It says, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect in the will of God. So there's that transformation word right there. That's that word. So we're going to take a transformer kind of aspect. We are this way. We're in the sin nature. We're in a world that says you can do whatever you want to do. We're going to live in a society that says, you know what, it's all about me. But that's not the way the Christian life is about. The Christian life says that you should renew your body. You should renew your mind. How do you do that? And you should be transformed. You should not just conform to what the world says. Just because someone wears a certain style of clothes, does that mean that you have to conform and wear those clothes? Many schools have gone to this, uh, gone to school uniforms. And whether you're on either side of that, uh, that conversation, you know, the goal is to bring unity. But yes, I know some people say, oh, well, that's conformity. But yet, we need to be transformed as Christians. We, need to be, we don't need to conform to a sinful world. And that's what that Bible, the, the verse is saying right here. The world is sinful. The world is damaged. The world is broken. But we, as believers in Christ, need to be transformed through and in Him. Leaving behind that sin nature and stepping out and living a life that is acceptable that is holy, and that brings good to God. What a powerful verse that is. And it's not just a powerful verse on paper. It's a powerful verse in our life. It gives us hope that we can not be bound down. Last week's message talked about being chained down by sin. I don't have to be chained down by my sin nature, by my mistakes from my past. But I can be transformed. And that's so beautiful. So some of you are thinking about that right now. You're thinking, well, I'm not good enough for God to love me. I'm not good enough or I've done so many horrible things in my life that he would never accept me. And that's farthest from the truth. If you read the scriptures, if you read the four gospels where it talks about Jesus dying on the cross for your sins, he hung between two thieves. And one of them looked at him and said, Sir, remember me when you enter glory. He was asking forgiveness. He was a murderer. He was a thief. He was, he was someone in the society that was horrible. And he didn't have time to clean himself up or to make things right. He just asked forgiveness. And Jesus said, Truly today you will be with me in paradise. That's the transformation we're talking about. Over 30 years ago, when I became a believer in Jesus Christ, I accepted him into my heart as my Lord and Savior. I didn't clean up my life going into that conversation. He cleaned me up after I accepted him, after he transformed me into a believer in him. And that's exactly what we need to do today with this scripture. I love that scripture because it says, don't worry about and don't change to be what the world says because the world is wrong, but the scriptures are right. And how do I do that? I renew, I transform by renewing my mind. I transform by cleaning up my heart and asking him to come in because of his forgiveness. I transform into the man he wants me to be, that he's created me. To be, And that's what the second half of this passage uh, gives us in this chapter. I love the rest of this. So verse 3, it says, So uh, I say, through the grace given to me to everyone who among you 
not thinking of himself more highly than he ought to think of himself, but be sober because God will deal with you with a measure of your faith. For as we have many members in one body, but all members do not have the same function. For we, being many, are one in the body of Christ, and the individual members together in that body. It goes on to talk about the different gifts that each one of us have. Listen, I have certain gifts that have been given to me by God, and it's my job to serve Him. Go back up into that verse 1. What did it say? It said that we should be living sacrifices, holy and acceptable to God, which is our reasonable service. My job is to use the gifts he's given me to serve him as a holy living sacrifice in serving him every day in front of people he gives me. That's the job I'm supposed to do. And I'm to be transformed in his word every day to power up my gifts. There are a lot of gifts I'm not good at. And I'll be honest about that. You've noticed that I am not playing a guitar. I'm not playing any kind of musical instrument. And I'm sure not trying to lead you in music today because that's not one of my gifts. I'm not good at that. But what I am gifted at is teaching God's word. What I am gifted at is caring for the needs with mercy and compassion. What I'm good at is some administrative kind of aspects because that's part of what I have to do is a lot of administration. Those are the gifts and the tools. And then there are other people that have other great gifts and other great tools. And we are to use those as a holy sacrifice acceptable for his service. How powerful and how wonderful that is. And then we look at it from the aspect of verse 9. So verse 9 says this, Let love be without hypocrisy. Man, let love. It starts out with that passage. Let love be without any hypocrisy. So we saw that we now have to transform our lives and not conform to the world. We know that God has gifted us with great skills and great gifts, and we use those to serve him in that transformation. Then he goes on to say in this last passage, he says, this is how I want you to behave. This is how I want you to act. This is how I want you to live. And he starts out with, hey, I want you to live with love. Live with love without hypocrisy. Abhor or despise all evil things and cling to what is good. Guys, you know that our society is just in chaos right now. Many people are protesting. Many people are, are you know, causing crimes to occur. We're living in a moment of fear and of complication. So now it's time for us as believers who are transformed in the love and in the power of Jesus Christ to start behaving with our skills the way he wants us to live. Live with good. Live with love. Verse 10, it says, Be kind and affectionate to one another with brotherly love. In honor, giving preference only to the other person, not to myself. So I should be that servant. I should be humble. And I should look to the other person in love, in brotherly love, and give them compassion. Rejoice in hope, patience, and in conforming to the steadfast in prayer. How are we going to make a change in our society? Many people have been asking that question. Many people are saying we need great change in our country. Yes, I'm going to agree to that. We need major change in every phase of our country, from our leadership down to the individual communities. But I promise you, how we're going to make that change is going to start with each individual person. It's going to start with me. It's going to start with my heart. And I need to transform my heart in love and affection that only is given from God. If I can focus on the way God wants me to focus, then my heart changes 
and my lifestyle changes and my approach to people change with love. That's how change is going to occur. One person at a time. Not through looting, not through crimes, not through you know, civil disobedience, but through personal transformation in my heart, in your heart, and in the hearts of people all around you. How does that occur? Let me tell you how that occurs. Because I have people that are around me that I influence every day. From my children that are little littles, to my college kid that's big, to the people I work with in my civilian job, to the people I serve with that I'm honored to be in this uniform. I am an influencer for Christ. You are an influencer for Christ. And how do we bring about that needed change? We bring about that needed change by influencing them using God's word and what he says. If I, if I conform to the world, I'm no better than all of those that are in civil disobedience. But if I transform my life by renewing my mind in God's word and in my passion for him, then I will use my skills that God has given me to behave the way he wants me to. Friends, that's what I want you to hear. You can make a major change. You can make a major change in the nation, but more importantly, you can make the major change in the person that's standing right next to you. That's where you make the change. Transform yourself into the person you need to be for Christ so that that other person can see that understand love, understand compassion, and move forward in change for them. I hope you've been blessed this morning. I have just opening up God's word, and I pray that you will just continue to read it every day. A couple of things just to finish out. I want you to know that I'm praying for you. Senior Chief Munoz is praying for you, but if you need more, you hit us up. Hit us up on our Facebook pages. Message us. Text us. Let us know. And we will be there for you. We want to know who you are if you need us to be. I encourage you to get into God's word every day. Spend as much time as you can in it. And if that's just five minutes just reading it, spend five minutes reading it. Go to my Instagram. My Instagram is Doc Claypool. D-O-C Claypool. If you'll go there, every day I post something that's encouraging, that has scripture in it. Dwell on that scripture. Sometimes it's a 30-second video. Sometimes it's just a picture. But dwell on that scripture and understand what you need to do. Let God use you. Let him transform you into the man and woman you need to be. And then lead out with great Christian passion. If you've never asked Christ into your heart as your Lord and Savior, and you're wondering about that, you feel that tug, that's the Holy Spirit working in your life. And if you'd like to know more about how to know him as your Lord and Savior, please let me know. And I would love to walk the scriptures with you so that you can understand and you can make that decision for yourself. Because it's a powerful decision, life-changing experience, and the most important decision you will ever, ever make. So I just want you to know that I want to encourage you today, transform your life so that you can be the man and the woman you need to be. I pray for you right now. Let's pray. Holy God, thank you for today, the opportunity to gather with my military and other family members as we just worship you. Let us worship you in prayer. Let us worship you in scripture. Let us worship you in music and sing of your voice and of your praises. God, I thank you for transforming me so many years ago into the man I needed to be then. And you're continuing to do that every day to be the man, the leader, the father, the husband I need to be. To lead. I ask you to bless everyone that's watching this video, everyone that's experiencing your word. Let it be for your glory, your honor, and for your kingdom's sake. And it's in your holy name that I pray. Amen.